Amen. We can appreciate him better. <laughs> I've discovered one more thing in him that can be a teacher. Sindio, you may have your seats. Amen. My name is Beatrice Waithaka, and I'm a member in, in this church, a daughter in the house. And I'm the speaker this morning, and you're the recipient. So you came. Yes, we are here together because we want to sharpen our axes that we can cut more logs so that tomorrow we may win the 1,000. It doesn't matter how old you are, but you can sharpen our axes this morning. Let's pray for the word. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we are here to say thank you for the past one week to your Lord. You've been so faithful to work in glory. We bless you for bringing us to your house this morning, Jehovah. We know in this house there's an exchange. And that's why we came this morning to your Father. That I'm depressed to your Father. You will lift them up, Jehovah God. Those are unwell, dear Father. We're going to speak healing upon them in Jesus' name. Because we know, dear Father, you're already here for us in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for your word this morning, Abba Father. We commit it unto you. Your word, Jehovah Father, is as powerful as you to your Lord. Therefore, speak to us in the language you can understand. Open up my spirit to your Father. Speak to people through me in the name of Jesus Christ. We know, dear Father, I'll prepare. But this morning, I speak life in this word, dear Lord. Let me reach your people to your Father at their level in the name of Jesus. We thank and bless you this morning. Come to your Father and do that only you can do to your Lord. We are here to receive. And you know you are here to your Father to give us, every one of us, according to your portion and according to your measure. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, this morning, the title of my message is There is Hope. There is hope, and you are going to read from the book of Judges, chapter number 11, in the NIV version. Judges, yes. Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty warrior. His father was Gilead. His mother was a... His mother was a teacher, was a pastor, was a cell leader, was a ladies coordinator was a Sunday school teacher. His mother was a... Yes, it is in the screen. His mother was a... Say it louder. You are not going to see when you say it louder. His mother was a... Amen. And maybe this morning you are here, and maybe your mother was that. See, it is written. Verse 2. Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away. Remember this. Gilead's wife was not the mother to Jephthah. The mother to Jephthah had no name because she was a... Are we together? The mother was a... She didn't have a name. But the other wife, the other mother had a name. She was the wife. So Jephthah's mother was not a wife. Are we together? You're not going to get any inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of another woman. And maybe you are here this morning. You are a son or a daughter of another woman. Amen. I want to preach to people like those. Amen. Verse 3. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tum, where a gang of squadrons gathered around him and followed him. Sometime later, when the Ammonites were fighting against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tomb. Come, they said, be our commander so we can fight the Ammonites. Jephthah said to them, didn't you hate me and drive me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you are in trouble? The elders of Gilead said to him, nevertheless, we are we are turning to you now. Come with us to fight the Ammonites and you'll be head over all of us who live in Gilead. Jephthah answered, Suppose you take me back to fight the Ammonites and the Lord gives them to me. Will I be your head? 
the elders of Gilead replied, the Lord is our witness. We will certainly do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead and the people made him head and commander over them. And he repeated all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. This is a story of a young man. A young man born out of wedlock, as you are in this house this morning. Born by a prostitute, as you are in this house this morning. But this young man had a future. Doesn't matter about, mind about his background. The Lord had a good future for this young man. And when this young man grew up, he didn't know that he was not born from the mother or from among the other brothers in this house. But the father knew. And I was setting the express service. When I read this, I thought of the, about the, the people from Meru and also from Luya Land. You know, in Luya, Luya Land, a lady remains a lady throughout her life. She's getting married here, gets two children. When I Sana, she takes off, leaves the children to the father. A middle lady gets a child, three, four, when I go the husband, she takes off, leave the, hus the husband with the children. The children belongs to the father in that community. And I think Gilead was one of them. He might be from Meru or from Luyalan. Because Gilead was born in that family. And Gilead had brothers and sisters, but from, from, not from the same mother, but from the same father. So what the mother did, when she gave birth, you know she was a prostitute. Thank God he was not aborted. So the mother took off and left Jephthah. They had to struggle through until Gilead passed on. And this is where the rubber touches the road. And you know, in our community, it doesn't matter where you come from, inheritance is very key. So when the father passed on, the elder sons thought, now this son is not going to inherit because he's not from our mother. And Gilead was to pack and go. Nobody knows. Because he could not trace his mother. The story does not say he traced his mother. He could not trace his mother. So he had to go where he, others can go. And that's why we told he went to the town of Tob. Whom did he meet in the town of Tob? He met men that were desperate. We'll come to that. Yes, he was a man rejected by his family. Maybe you are here this morning, you are suffering rejection. In one way or the other, maybe you are not the best choice of the family. You are suffering rejection. Maybe they needed a boy, you came a girl. Maybe they needed a girl, yeah, you came a boy. You are suffering rejection. But this morning, the rejected will be accepted because there is a savior who did on the cross for us. Jephthah was an outcast by society. This child was born by a prostitute. And you know, in Africa, or even in our nation, titles matter a lot. Jephthah did not choose to be born by a prostitute. If he was asked, he could not have accepted to be born in that family and in that way. But here he comes, born by a prostitute. And maybe you are here, your mother was like Jephthah's mother. I'm here to give you hope. That there is hope even this morning. You have a future. That was your mother, but you have your future. Jephthah fled because of the stigma from the society. He could not have coped with it. He left. But God, God of many chances, came through for Jephthah. He was written off. Nobody wanted to be associated with the Jephthah because of one thing, remember this. Jephthah was not a prostitute, but he's an outcome of the prostitution. But because of that, Jephthah was an outcast. Jephthah was rejected. Jephthah was written off by everybody who should have cared about him. He's a small boy. You don't know how old was he when he left Gilead's family, but he went to look for him. Sir, thank God, because there was godly virtues in Jephthah. Yet in the end, Jephthah became the leader of his people. And this morning, I'm going to look two things, and then we'll call it a day. Number one, Jephthah, the unwanted brother. Jephthah, the unwanted brother. This we get from verse 1 to verse 3. Jephthah 
wasn't to blame for his birth. And I wish they could know this, that they could not have blamed this young man. Because for him, he didn't know what his mother would do, was doing. Maybe he wa others are born out of rape. Maybe your mother was raped. And here you come. Thank God you're not aborted. Even if she tried how many times, thank God. At some point in a corner, you didn't come out. And that's why you are here to hear this message, that there is a future. It doesn't mind about your background. But what matters is your tomorrow. Friends, in salvation, we have so many promises. But let me tell you, salvation, it is from the promise to the provision. What happens in between from the promise to the provision, that is what we call salvation. And that was what would make us to reach heaven if we can endure in between the, the promise and the provision. Many of us long, fall along the way, along the waiting, because you cannot persevere what you're going through. But thank God for Jephthah, because his end was brighter than his beginning. Gilead had a wife, but he consorted with a prostitute and fathered a son. Even we can also say thank you because of Gilead. He never denied this son. He took him aboard with the other sons. Maybe at that year there were two sons from the wife and from the prostitute. But they were all from Gilead. At least Gilead acknowledged the boy and took him into his home. But his other brothers did accept this son of a strange woman. Gilead had a other name. Not only his name was Gilead, he was Gilead born of a prostitute. He was Gilead born from a strange woman. He was Gilead an outcast. He was Gilead. Oh God, all those names were on this young man. And you know this young man was so, how can I put it, selfless. And he, was, he had nothing to do with where he came from. But here he is. When Gilead died and the inheritance was to be divided, the legitimate sons. Do you have legitimate sons in this place? Do you have legitimate sons? Say yes. Yes. The legitimate sons said he cannot inherit because he's from a strange woman. Little did they know they were rejecting a future judge of Israel. Nobody knew what Jephthah carried, but God knew that this is a future judge of Israel. But they chased him because of land. They chased him because of property. But God knew there's something special in this young man. But with my time, with my timing, Jephthah will come back to this place. Jephthah left his father's territory and went forth to the land of Tum, which is near Syria. And there he became captain of a band of adventures. These are the people. I was thinking maybe Jephthah where he went yeah, to, to the town of Tum. They are cities of refuge. Maybe he went to one of them. And where he went David, we, we see Badai. When he went to that to that city of Tum, these are the people he met in that the band of men he met in that town. These were vain men Men that were worse than Jephthah. And if this man, everybody had a story. Jephthah ran from home because he was from a prostitute mother. The mother broke somebody's marriage. And that's why I'm here. What about you? The, every man had a story. Some were vain. Some were empty men. You don't know how empty they were. And some were persons destitute for good sense. Others were recklessly extravagant or wasteful in the use of resources. And some were poor persons. Remember, all these were men. There was no lady here. All these were men. Some were without property and some without employment. And Jephthah became their leader. Put yourself in the shoes of Jephthah. He was looking for rescue, looking for a home. People that he's meeting and people that have more problems than him. And they want, they, they want him to be his, their leader. And because this man had nowhere else to go, he decided to do what? To decide with these men that were more despite than him. Jephthah was already known as a man of valor. There's also another man who became a captain of people that are more desperate and more problem than him. And this was David. 
David in the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 22, verse 1 and 2. This was a time that David was running away from his son Absalom. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him fair. Verse 2. All those who were in distress, look at the people, look at the combination of people that were in that cave of Adullam. All those who were in, or in, or in, or discontented gathered around him, and he became their commander. About 400 were there women. These were 400 men were with him. That's David. Number two, we want to look at the unopposed leader. Unopposed leader. And you get it from the, from the very first 4 to 11. Jephthah brothers did want him, but the elders of Israel needed him and sent a delegation 80 miles to the land of two. They no sent one man. They sent a delegation. That's what God can do. They sent a delegation to the land of two. Now, not near, 80 miles to the land of Tomb to ask him to come and take charge. They needed somebody. They needed a captain. They needed a leader. They needed a warrior. And the only person they could go for was Jephthah. Jephthah's reprise re 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 was a good deal like what the Lord has said to the people. When turn, they turned to him for help. In verse 10, Chapter 10, sorry, the Bible says that the Lord addressed the children of Israel and he said, yet you have abandoned me and served other gods. So I will not rescue anymore. Go and cry out to the gods you have chosen. Let them rescue in your honor of distress. This is chapter 10, verse 13 and 14. You can't help but appreciate the way Jephthah emphasized the Lord in know his negotiations with the leaders of Israel. When these leaders came to Jephthah, he did not remember what he had gone through. Because these are not the people who are chasing him away. These are the elders of Israel. But the brothers have sent him away. Jephthah did not keep a grudge or accuse these elders because of what he went through. But he accepted the offer. And he knew the only person who can help me here, it is my God. And therefore he negotiated with the Lord concerning the children of Israel. Jephthah didn't see the challenge as a political opportunity. You know, you can see the, and say, this is the Lord. You see the opportunity. But Jephthah gave all the glory to God because he knew, even preserving his life, he took the hand of God. But you could as an occasion for trusting the Lord and serving him. When you go through challenges, do you take it an opportunity to serve the Lord? Do you take it an opportunity to trust in the Lord? Jephthah knew. Out of this, my trust to the Lord will be lifted on high. My faith in the Lord will be announced higher. In addition, the writer of Hebrews makes it clear that Jephthah was a man of faith, not simply an opportunist. He was a man of faith. Remember, his life was all about faith. Where he was born, how he was brought up, how he left that home, not knowing where he's going. It was a life of faith. But thank God, because God rewards our faith. We can't help but to wonder how his brothers felt when these elders came back to Israel with Jephthah. Put yourself in their shoes. There he is, the one you sent away, the one who chased away with the elders of people that are known in the society. He's coming back with those elders, this, the brother. He's no longer your brother the, brother, the son you sent away, the son from a strange woman, the son from a prostitute, and now he comes with the elders. And he's coming to your home because he must have a home where he'll be deciding when going to battle and coming back. He must, and this is a home that he only knows. He's going to go to the elders. He knew he has a home because he had a father in that home. When the, the father passed on, the mother took off. He knew that I belong to the right 44, and I can show you our home. And these elders knew. This son belongs to this home. And now, think of these brothers who chased him away. But they need, they need somebody to go and fight for them. Buenas, if you were, are we together? 
there are many people in the scripture we are going to look at, few, that have gone through the same experience. Think of Joseph. Joseph was rejected. First by his brothers, then by his parents. But finally, Joseph became their savior. Think of David. It took seven years to gain the full support of the 12 tribes of Israel. In the book of Luke, chapter number 2, verse 36. Luke 2, 36 and 37. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. You see, Anna was the daughter of Penuel. Do we find his husband's name? Are we together? See, it is in the screen. Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. 37. And then was a widow until she was 84. Remember, she lived with her husband for only seven years. After seven years, the husband passed on. So her name was... Her name was... Her name was changed from being married to a, a widow. In a span of only seven years, a name changed. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. That was Anna. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day. I think she had a ministry of intercessory. Or she had a department of prayer and fasting. It is possible that Anna was given a living quarters, not within the church. Because being a prophet and having the ministry of prayer and fasting, maybe she lived within the church. She had a quarters within the church. Or she lived close by. But what stands out is that her devotion was rewarded. Friends, serving our God, doesn't matter your title, but serving our God shall be rewarded. Because Anna is among few Women that are in the genealogy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She saw the Savior. She saw this kid, this king that was born in a manger. And when she saw the king, he said, now I'm ready to go home. 84 years. If you can minus 7 years and 84 years, how many years are those? She served the Lord more years than she served her husband. There's no record that she had children, but only two things are known. She was married for seven years. And she lived in the house of the for 84 years as a widow. Not only sitting down, but doing what? Serving the Lord as a prophetess. And in praying and fasting. You ask, 84 years, how can you pray and fast? Yes, it is possible. Anna is, we can ref, there's a reference from Anna. That she served the Lord in prayer and fasting. She had the same body that we have. The same flesh that we have. But she served the Lord in prayer and fasting. In the book of Joshua, chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. Joshua. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shittim. Go, look over the land. He said, especially where? Especially so they went and entered the house of Aho, a leader, a coordinator, a pastor, a single mother, a house of who? Prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. The king of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent his message, this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and entered your house. Because you have come, they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman, you see, but the who? Not the prostitute, no, it is there. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I believe this was a gated community. 
I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of lask she had laid out on the roof. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the falls of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. How many houses had the spies passed by? How many before they landed to the house of Rahab? How many had they passed? They passed the house of a pastor, a cell leader, a coordinator, a men's leader, a men chairman. But then to, to whose house? Rahab's house. Rahab had another name. She was a prostitute. When she saw this man, she said, oh, a new customer today. Cindy, oh. But the, the hospitality of Rahab to this man changed her whole story. Because Rahab saved her entire family. Even prostitutes have wisdom. Who told Rahab, hide these people in the upper room? So because God, God, Jesus died even for prostitutes. She gave her wisdom. Hide these men in the upper room. What if she said, no, I can't take men to my upper room. That's why I take my business people. And these are not my, part of my customers. She could have missed it. But through the obedience, Rahab took these people to the upper room. And they knew, she knew, these men would be killed. And she made a way of escape for them. Also, Rahab is in the, in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Look at the people that make the life of Jesus. People that are hopeless, people that have no name, the outcast, the rejected, those are the people who make the history of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And finally, in the book of Samuel, chapter, 2 Samuel, another character. 2 Samuel, chapter 11. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was beautiful. And David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Hated. Hold on. The daughter of, please, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Verse 4. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent a word to David saying, I am pregnant. Friends, the woman was somebody's wife. The wife of a warrior. The wife in the army of David. But David purposely killed Uriah that he can remain with a wife. And this way when she conceived, you know Solomon, the wisest man is from this family. And maybe it was the one the mother conceived. But let me tell you this morning, our God is so gracious. Separate the deed, the act with the doer. God had favor upon Solomon. The same case he has favor upon you, no matter how you came to this world. We dealt with the first story of Jephthah. From a prostitute came a mighty warrior. We came to Joseph from rejection. He was accepted. We came to who? To David. This is the same David that it took 12 years for him to be accepted as a king in Israel. Then we went on to who? To Anna. Anna, a widow. You know, biblically, Anna could have been, could have been married the second time. Because a widow, unless you are 60 years, you are able to, be get, to get married. But Anna purposed to serve the Lord. More years than she served her husband. And then finally, we have Rahab, a prostitute. Even in the Bible, we have prostitutes. Yes, because they are there with a the purpose. That even today, in this house, it doesn't matter your title. 
maybe you're a leader, maybe you're a prostitute, maybe you're from a single mother. The Lord says, still have a space for you. And that's where I came. Bwana Sifiwe, through the Sheba story, discover that God can bring good out of the ashes of sin. It doesn't matter where you are. The ashes of sin. You know ashes of sin? Do you know ashes? Ashes of sin. God can bring good out of the ashes of sin. But the Sheba was the wife of Rhea, the Hittite, a warrior in King David's army. King David planned a plot to kill Uriah and later married his wife. And out of this marriage, among other sons, the one notably is Solomon. Among other sons. Remember in the, in the family of Gilead, there were so many sons, but Gilead was chased away. And in this family, among other sons, Solomon was noted. Chefida illustrates the fact that being a social outcast need not indicate the absence of trust and faith in God. It doesn't matter your background. Hold on to your faith and trust in the Lord. Because your future is not in where you came from. Your future, it is in your maker. The maker of heaven and earth. He holds your future. Hold on to him. And that a person with an unhappy childhood need not grow up to be unsuccessful. It doesn't matter. Your childhood, you are unhappy during your childhood. That does not qualify you to be unsuccessful. Look at the people who have qualified in the Bible. They all have a story. And a successful story. Jephthah, born out of wedlock, was rejected and driven away by his brothers. Even though they apparently grew up together. How difficult this climate must have been for young Jephthah. This is where you've been grow, grown and brought up. And I believe he was a teenage the time he left that home. He knew no other home apart from this one. And now he was chased away. Think of that climate. And maybe this morning you are here. You are born from a dysfunctional family. When you grew up, you had a father and a mother. But along the way, one of them took off. Maybe your mother took off or your father took off. And you were brought up by a single parent. There is hope for you. Let not your yesterday deter you from facing your tomorrow. Because your tomorrow is better than your yesterday. One as if you were sana. Maybe along the way, you got married and the husband took off. And now you're raising the children single-handedly. Don't worry. I said in the express service, the first child to be born out of wedlock was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're not the first. No, we need to be the, the, the last. Jesus Christ was the one who was first born out of wedlock. Remember, Mary was not married, but she gave forth a son. The nothing that you're going through today, it, you are the first to, dis to discover. Mm -mm. There was somebody before you, and they made it in life. Or maybe you, become, you became a widow. You cherished this marriage. Yes, you lived and think upon the Lord and you got married. But along the way, you became a widow. There was Anna, you can emulate. We are doing a book by the name of Replenish. Replenish. And yesterday, we are looking at people that you can emulate. And that was one of them. Whom would you like to emulate in life? I'm saying to the widows in this place, emulate Anna. There was a widow before you. Maybe you're here. Look at your background. I was a prostitute. Emulate Rahab. Maybe you are here. You got a child with somebody's husband. Emulate who? Jephthah. Jephthah. His background did not deter him from facing his future because there is a lot in your future. And maybe you are here with an orphan. In the house of God, there are no orphans. You have sisters and brothers here, mothers and fathers here, just by choice to be an orphan. And maybe you are a widower. You're married. You had a good marriage, children. But along the way, your wife passed on. There's hope in, the morning, in this house this morning. Because God is going to carry you through. Maybe an outcast like Jedifa. But the Lord is here to develop leadership in you. Remember, nobody picked Jedifa in his homestead. But God knew 
there's some treasure in this young man. And he became a leader of a community. Nobody and no one had protected his rights. Jephthah has rights like another child, but nobody protected her, his rights. And that's why they drove him away out of, his, of, of the family. But now, in danger, these people want to use his skills. And Jephthah came back because he knew. Even if you sent me away, my trust and my faith in God is still in me. And that's why he came back. It may be surprising when the delegation arrived to hear his outskirts speaking so similarly, though they were not, they were not sure he will make it, the brothers. But the elders knew this man is capable to deliver us from the Ammonites. I don't know where you are this morning. I don't know about your past, but I have a, a message for you. There's a future and there's a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11, God has a future and a hope for you. It doesn't matter where you came from. When you look back, as David said, when you look back, all the night, your pillow is full of tears. Don't cry anymore. Now focus. Because there is a future that is the house of the Lord. Your parents cannot give you a future. Only God can give you a future. It doesn't matter how they brought you into this world. You're looking for a father or a mother or a sister or brother. There's none you can find. But the Lord is saying this morning, I am your father. I am your husband. I am your friend. If at all, you can come to me because I have all that it takes. It doesn't matter what you have lost. In this life, as I told you, it's from, from the promise to the provision. That's where the journey is. The Lord is saying, I'm coming to restore all that the Kakomos have written. Only stand still and wait upon me. Because I'm the only one. It doesn't say that I'm going to send the angels to come and restore. Mm -mm. It says, I am coming to restore all that the Kakomos have written. This morning, because you are called by his name, the Lord is so concerned about your life. Leave your future. Yesterday was Saturday. Today is Sunday. Don't leave yesterday. Today is Sunday. And the Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. If Jephthah holded on to his past, he could not be where he is today. But Jephthah knew that this, this life is all about transition. I was, now I am. If you can embrace life, that life is full of transition, friends, you'll make it in life. Let's stand on our feet. We are all here this morning, and we have a story. We had, now we don't have. We were, now we are not. But the Lord is saying, I'm the only one who never changes. I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. If you can just embrace my promises, because they are here and amen, they'll come to pass in your life. Everybody has a story. Even a one-day-old child has a story. But the beauty is our future is brighter than our yesterday. I don't know what is in your heart this morning. I don't know what you have lost. I don't know what you've been clinging on. Every night crying. Lord, remember. He has remembered and he has heard. Then we take off. We're, not leave, we're going to live yesterday. There's a day known as today and tomorrow. We must live today and live tomorrow. Because the one who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light holds our hand. We go before the Lord. Just search your heart. Search your heart. What you have lost. Search your heart. Because the restorer is here. The repairer of the broken bridges is in this house this morning. To repair that bridge. To repair that relationship. To repair that communication. To repair that family. To repair that marriage. To restore what the car comes have been And to give you a future and a hope. Father, we thank you. And we bless you. We honor you this morning because you are faithful. You promise that to hold on to you to your father. Because you fail not. And this morning to your father. We are here to your Lord. Like the man to your father in the Adulam cave to your Lord. Like the man to your father in the tomb in, a, in Syria to your father. We need you. 
We need you, Abba Father. We need you as our captain. We need you as our warrior. We need you, Jehovah Father, because we need a leader in this cave to your Father. Won't you come and be our leader? Come and fill us to your Father where other things have left us dry. Abba Father, come and fill us. Come and restore what the Kakoms have written to your Father. Won't you come and restore? Come and give us a name, Jehovah Father. We've been given names by society to your Father because of where we have come from to your Lord, because of our background everlasting Father, because of our childhood to your Lord. But this morning we are here. Come and give us a name. Yes, we just found us ourselves in this world to your Father. Oh God, a different circumstances to your Father. We found ourselves in this world. But you know, you can give us a name. You can clean our name to your Father and give us a name, Jehovah Father. We don't have a name in the society. We don't have a name in our working place to your Father. We've been labeled to your Lord. But you know, this morning, you can give us a name. We are running to you, Jehovah Father. You say that you came for your own. They received you not. But them that received you to your father, you give them power and authority to become children of God. Thank you because you are a children this morning. We are your children this morning to your father. We've been labeled to your father. People call us single mothers. People call us children from a prostitute. Children from single mothers. Oh God and our father, come and give us our name children from drunken families, drunken fathers, Abba Father, won't you come and give us a name? Won't you come to your Father and cleanse the mess that we've been in to your Father? Lift us, Jehovah Father, from that quick mire to your Lord and give us a name in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you because you are coming to restore. Restore our name. Restore our dignity. Restore our integrity. Restore Jehovah Father. Oh, Shikaraba Santa Rabuzai. Jesus, come and restore. Restore to your Father. Oh, God. Come and restore. We thank you. We bless you this morning. Thank you for your mercies. Because they are new every morning. We want to live today to your Father. Oh God, get us from yesterday, Abba Father. Bring us today because we want to live today and walk with you. Because new masses were not for yesterday, but they are for today. We thank you and we honor you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are blessed.